King George V died after he was given a lethal dose of morphine and cocaine in the final few hours of the night of January 20, 1936. The 70-year-old was treated solely by his doctor, Bertrand Dawson, first Viscount Dawson of Penn and physician to the royal family, who administered the lethal concoction shortly before midnight. Speaking on his podcast Dan Snow's History Hit, the 44-year-old historian began his episode on George V, released in April last year, by saying, I'd like to report a murder that has taken place and the police did nothing about it. The victim was Mr. George Windsor otherwise known as King Emperor George V, yes folks, the King of the United Kingdom was killed by his personal physician on the night of January 20. He added that he thinks murder is probably the correct noun or verb to describe what took place. Historian Jane Ridley, author of the 2021 book George V, Never a Dull Moment, was interviewed on the podcast and when asked whether or not George was murdered, she said she thinks there is a discrepancy between what was acceptable in the 30s and what is acceptable nowadays. She said, I think today, there are two factors. There is absolutely no evidence that King George told Dawson or anyone indeed that he wanted to be let out of his agony if he was dying. There's no evidence of his having that conversation with anybody. And the second point is that although it is clear that he was very ill, George wasn't actually in pain. So the two things that might have justified what Dawson did. 1. That he was putting the king out of his agony or two that he was obeying a sort of end-of-life will that the king had made, did not exist. Like many at the time, George V. smoked a lot after developing a dependence during World War I. In 1928, George contracted a serious chest infection to the point where everyone thought the end was nigh, Miss Ridley explained. But he recovered and it was not until around New Year of 1936 that it became clear that his days were numbered. At Sandringham Castle, Norfolk, George was treated by Lord Dawson. The pair had got on well with Miss Ridley explaining that George was a direct speaker and liked being treated by someone who did not beat around the bush. Although he wasn't a marvelous clinician, nor a famous research doctor, he was a doctor who represented the medical profession such as in the House of Lords. But most importantly, he understood the king she explained. The king was on his last legs as January drew on, suffering from a cough, heart failure and left unable to walk. In his final few days, Lord Dawson spent a great deal of time with George alone. What exactly happened is not known but historians note that Lord Dawson had a conversation with Queen Mary who said she did not want the king to have an undignified death. At around 11 p.m. on January 20, 1936, Lord Dawson asked the nurse to give the king two injections, one of lethal morphine and another of cocaine. But Miss Riley explained that the nurse knew they were lethal and refused to do it, forcing Dawson to do it himself. Ms. Riley said, within a short period of time, the king becomes completely peaceful, sleeping, calm and unconscious. He dies at 11.55 p.m. I think it wasn't normal but I think it probably wasn't illegal. This was an area which at that time, in the 30s, there wasn't the whole legal protocol around it that there is today. Both euthanasia and assisted suicide were made illegal in the UK in 1961 under the Suicide Act. She continued, there weren't doctors being frightened of being sued by the families of their dying patients. So it was a matter more of practice rather than law. But nevertheless, I think a lot of doctors if they had known what had happened at that time would have been very surprised indeed. Dawson intervened partly to spare the king as he knew that he would go through pain, although Miss Riley notes that he was not in pain at the time. Instead, his death was done for th.